Aloha and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about everything to do with veganism and the plant-based diet. We're coming live to you from the gorgeous Think Tech Hawaii studios in downtown Honolulu. Always huge mahalo to Think Tech for allowing shows like this to, to air. We do uh, ask that you donate, make a tax deductible donation to any of the shows that resonate with you so that we can continue making these awesome shows and informing you about what's going on in Hawaii, like the very important plant-based diet. So I'm here uh, with my awesome guest, Carlos Garcia, all the way from Maui. And we're here for part two with Carlos to talk more about uh, Carlos's journey with veganism. Carlos, welcome. Aloha, great to see you again. Aloha. I do want to introduce you to the viewers who missed part one of our show with you. You are a Maui-based musician and publisher of Living Aloha magazine, which was founded in 2014, and I'm sure is going to get up and running again sometime in the future. You are also an activist and philosopher. Did I, oh, leave, did uh, I leave anything out? <laughs> oh, there's a lot more, but we won't have to go into all that. That's great. That covers a lot. And uh, yeah, I think it's important to, uh, to take care of our home here on this planet and uh, everything on it. Absolutely. That's what I'm about. Yeah. Carlos, I did leave one thing out on purpose just for a bit of a tease, but um, I do have to mention that you were voted by Peter uh, as 2020, sorry, excuse me, 2019 sexiest male vegan over 50. Yes, I must say that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is such an awesome title. I mean, not many of us vegans can say we uh, hold a title like that. So good for you. And you recently have spent some time in, Car uh, in Thailand, Carlos. Tell us about your trip and what you did there. Wow. Well, yeah, I just got back a few days ago. And um, uh, my main thing was to find out what this place that had been called you know, in many ways, and by many people, a vegan island. Well, not exactly a vegan island, but it was definitely vegan. And when you can walk the distance of two or three minutes, and there are 20 vegan restaurants, you've got my attention for sure. And uh, so it's an area of Pangan, it's in the south of Thailand. Uh, it was mentioned by some articles, mentioned by uh, uh, Happy Cow, it's mentioned by you know, all kinds of places that it's just really great place. And besides veganism, it's yoga, there's massage, beautiful beaches, there's drum circles, there's a lot of music and that music thing adds a lot for me. And uh, so it's cool and great community. Uh, and I, you know, met and started building some relationships with people so I can get more people from here to go there and experience that. Uh, you know, in some kind of either personal retreat or a personal vacation or retreat where, you know, there's a school and different things to do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just drawing me there again. And although oh, I've got, I just got back, it's like half the bit I'm thinking about there. <laughs> thinking uh, about your next trip. I, of course, I love, yeah, I love Hawaii, of course, but, uh, you know, but there's this place that, uh, you know, in, in the, in a square mile has more vegan restaurants than the entire state of Hawaii. That's interesting. Yeah. Carlos, would you say that these <laughs> restaurants mainly are um, filled with tourists or are people in Thailand actually on plant-based diets? Uh, well, on the, um, in Bangkok, it was a lot of tourists and uh, yes. in, uh, and Kopangan, the island, down, uh, most of the people are international there, so it is very tourist -oriented. But again, they, you know, a lot of the locals, you know, they, they go everywhere and met up with some, you know, met some nice people that became really close friends that own a vegan restaurant that's also a music space and dance space. And, you know, and with them, we're going to set up some kind of retreats where everything is pretty much vegan. That's yeah, yeah, that sounds yoga. awesome. Uh, 
and yoga retreats, completely vegan, several of them. Mm-hmm. And so, so they're going to work with us to make this happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I want to bring some of that spirit to Hawaii and get it going similarly and to the whole world, actually, the vegan thing. You know, you know, that's why we're all here. It's very important to us it, and uh, it's important to the planet, it's important to the animals. It's, it's like, mm-hmm. uh, you are breaking up a little bit, Carlos. Unfortunately, I'm, I apologize to the viewers for the, the connection, but we are trying to um, trying to hear what you're saying. And it's it's fantastic. Uh, having lived myself personally in Hawaii for just over a year, I must say that I do find there is a, quite a large vegan movement here, in my opinion. I, I do see a large community here uh, of vegans who are very supportive of each other, who do uh, try and get some events going throughout the year. Not as many restaurants as you were saying that are in Thailand, but um, hopefully more and more will pop, pop up in the future. Carlos, I wanted to ask you something that I get asked often, and that is how would you how would you re- recommend or what would you recommend someone do if they are interested in learning more about starting a vegan diet or a plant-based diet? Um, well, I look at it as a diet. A diet is one. Living vegan is another thing. Uh, me, uh, oh, they, they were, my two biggest influences were the movie Earthlings, that changed life, and reading the book World Peace Diet by Dr. Will Tuttle was also very important. Uh, because uh, Earthlings is the more yes, of the graphic. Will Tuttle is a very veganizer. influential, yes, very influ- influential person in the in the vegan world. So definitely do check out that book that you just mentioned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Will, he's more of the intellectual veganizer. And the information you get in there really makes you uh, with the whole spirit of why this exploitation, you know, can't continue. Uh, you know, it's really show, going back to uh, you want to get your foundation saying, okay, I want to eat vegan is one thing, but try to find the true feeling of why we are working, then it's much easier because you're going to find it. Because when you, you know, when you look at the fact that, you know, 10,000 years ago, people started valuing wealth based on how many animals you owned, you know, that's a very, that's not a good gauge of the world, you know? And so now we got to get away from that, that these have their own lives. We have the way that we need to, uh, do this, do this to animals in order to eat well and be healthy. So getting the foundation right is so much more important than, I mean, it's important to get the food right, but the foundation so that no matter what you, what happens, you're going to find your, your, your information. And but knowing that you just cannot take that step to take advantage of another creature so that you can live another day uh that is the first thing we need to understand yeah. you know um but there are many resources on there's so much uh, cookbooks and uh uh websites and talks and you just have to google anything and there's many there's years more than you can spend your whole life uh, of information out there about why we should live vegan so uh mad cowboy uh is another uh, important book for me uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, What the Health and, uh, those movies, you know, game, those are game changer. I think Game Changer is a good one that, that relates to a lot of people because it does clear up uh, some of the questions that people have about, uh, things like protein, protein deficiency that, <clears throat> excuse me, that a lot of people still are a misunderstanding. So definitely watch some of the documentaries, read some books there. As you said, there are endless amounts of resources out there. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, there's no shortage of anything out there uh, to find out. And and the food is so much better. I mean, there, there's no, 
I don't have to tell you, and that's what you do also. Do you know what, Carlos? And... Every time someone um, comes to one of my seven course dinners or events, or if I'm cooking for friends, uh, every time I cook for them, the first thing they say is, I ate so much and I didn't feel bad after it. Well, that's, that's a big thing. It is. That's a big thing. Cause it they, is. Because they're making that connection that, you know, there's a price for eating meat yeah, or yeah. dairy or yes. eggs. And, and they're starting they're to understand, eating. yes, that you're not supposed to feel bad or sick after you eat certain things, yeah. which is something we don't experience on a plant-based uh, diet. So very interesting. The other thing, Carlos, I wanted to mention, something that's coming up a lot uh, with people I talk about, and that is when you are starting you know, your journey on a vegan lifestyle or you are starting to cut out animal products from your uh, diet, Learn how to say no. What yeah, I mean with that big... is, yes, and if I may, what I mean is, you know, learn how to say no, no thank you, when somebody offers you something that you, you are trying not to eat anymore. And I, I have to say this, I see it from my own eyes all the time, people kind of want you to, to cheat or, you know, want you to fail sometimes when it comes to, you know, trying to get healthier, eat healthier foods, start, you know, eat more plant-based foods. And a lot of people say to me, Lillian, when I go out, you know, people, they know my favorite foods, they're always cooking them. And I just, I can't help but say, you know, say yes. It's like, learn how to say no. No one's going to make you or force you <laughs> to do anything you don't want to do. So I think that's something that we all really should consider. And then people yeah. around you will start to learn that they can't, you know, they can't keep uh, pushing your buttons and trying trying to get you to go back to your old ways if what you're actually trying to do is move on and, you know, start a new, healthier lifestyle. Yeah, that's a tough one to, because a lot of people don't want to, they don't want to uh, hurt the feelings of the person that offered the food. Absolutely. And yes. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but it, it, you're hurting my feelings, you know, uh trying to make me eat that stuff and you know yeah that's a tough thing and and you know family is the toughest one to break yes i don't think i have to tell you because they they know everything your family knows what you should know yes and uh you know they know that i need mental help because i'm questioning that uh what, what they're eating may not be healthy mm -hmm. you know yeah. it may be a cause of all the problems that they're having Absolutely. with their weight and with their knees being replaced and all these different things that mm -hmm. They just don't want to make the connection to. Yeah. Well, Carlos, we are we are going to take a short break and, and then come back and continue talking about this. I think it's very important to to learn about how we can start a vegan uh, lifestyle. So stay tuned, everyone, and see you after the break. Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik. I am a vegan chef and cooking instructor. At the end of this year, I am actually going to be bringing out a cookbook so do stay tuned for that with all of Hawaii's favorites. Uh, at today, I am welcoming back Carlos Garcia from Maui for part two of our uh, talk with Living Aloha publisher, 
Maui musician, uh, activist, philosopher, and 2019's sexiest vegan male over 50. <laughs> Carlos, I, 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 I'm going to have to st steal that title for, from you one, one of these days. <laughs> sure, probably the female might be better, but... Uh, uh... <laughs> Yeah, not that, but not the yeah. male one. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. Welcome back, and uh, thank you for joining us, Carlos. You're getting up to a lot of things. Uh, before we started the show, you mentioned a, a retreat, a, med a meditation retreat that you're going to be participating in on Hawa Oahu. If you won't, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you know, I've heard of people doing meditation retreats in general. And then I've heard about these uh, silent retreats and they go anywhere from a weekend to five or 10 days. And for some reason, I applied to one that was for 10 days and got accepted. And it's on Oahu on the North Shore. At, uh, it's an organization that does a lot of uh, different meditations and especially the Vipassanas around Hawaii. So, you know, I, I've known people that'll take them and they tell me it'll really be great for you to be able to do that because you can, you get to really take, you know, put a lot of the world away from you. Uh, there's no computers, there's no emails, there's no phones. And you just kind of, you're away from that part of the world and you get to look at yourself and you sit and meditate for eight to 10 hours a day. And it's something that is available to anyone and they're, and they're actually free but you know, you make a little donation if you can at the end, uh, but it, it's generally free and they supply all the food and a place to stay. I think it's at a Boy Scout camp up in, uh, in the, on the North Shore uh, of Oahu. And several people have told me that's something I, I probably need with my crazy busy life, trying to do more than is physically possible all the time. And uh, so a bunch of things have steered me in that direction and it looks like I'm going to go. Wow, interesting. Good luck. I, I, I'm interested to see how it goes after it. Ten days is a long time to not be talking at all. Ten minutes for me is a long time. <laughs> yes, so for the average uh, person, yes. And so, all the, all the know, oh, pardon me, Carlos, all the food is vegan. Uh, most of it is, yeah. And... Uh, I'm not sure if it all completely is, but it's definitely vegetarian. And uh, so, you know, all of that together and it's going to be, you know, on the North Shore. And it's like, you know, and delving into areas that I've never uh, gone into, which I think I might need. And uh, people have recommended it to me. So Yeah, I think that's, all, I, that's, I think yeah, that's, that's awesome. Fun. I think the more the longer you stay on a vegan or in, in a vegan lifestyle and eating more plant-based foods, I think, I think you start to really seek out other ways uh, to, to better your health or your, your well-being. Just, just naturally people on vegan or plant-based diets tend to be very spiritual, very into their health, very into their mental, physical well-being. So this is, I like the way you vibe, Carlos. You're taking care of yourself, yeah. and, and that's really the, the most important thing to do. We're not supposed to be here middle-aged in our 40s, 50s, popping pills every day. You, the human body should be healthy enough to, you know, to be able to sustain some of the, the pressure that we put on it. And I think one thing that we can do for our bodies is to really consider what we're feeding them. Yeah, I, you know, I, I watch my you know, my own family go through this with pills and just, you know, this load of pills that they have to deal with every day. And it's just so awful. And I think they're more sick from taking those pills. I think they're more sick from those pills than they are from anything they might have, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't even know what the point is, but you know, you have to handle things your own way and help Absolutely. whoever wants to be helped. Yes. And, uh, but yeah, um, you know, and, and you mentioned something during our little break about uh, did you want to, I don't know if you wanted to go into that thing about people kind of cheating. Mm -hmm. uh, go, you know, by all you means, know, go ahead. Yeah, because to me, when, when a vegan 
when someone says that a vegan, they saw them cheating or whatever, whatever, well, that, pro that person probably really isn't living vegan. They might eat vegan most of the time or some of the time, or at least, you know, to this person. But, you know, when you live vegan, it doesn't matter. It's like, you know, if you're going to cheat because that, that cookie there, you know, had some milk or eggs or whatever, it's like saying to me, it's like saying, oh, well, animals can suffer sometimes, you know? You know, and mostly not, but sometimes it's okay. So that's where I draw that line. And, you know, the, you know, like I think, just getting a little deeper is that as far as the sources of what kind of food to eat, what kind of programs, and, you know, there's so many groups and Facebook groups and potlucks and many ways and cooking classes, you know, like you really can uh, find that stuff everywhere nowadays. And, but I wanted to point out that, you know, getting down to that one point of like that I mentioned on the part one of this is that it all boils down to the heartbeat. We appreciate our heartbeat and how important that is to uh, for us to get air, to get nutrients, to get all of that. And we don't want to have that deprived from us. So why would we do that to another creature? That's what it boils down to. And once we understand that, it's easier to live vegan. And for me, living vegan is not just about food. It's not just about, you know, living vegan. It's about you, you're not racist. You're not sexist. You're not homophobic. You're not, you know, all these things, you know, so it's much more than just about food for me. You have let go of all these things that society wants you to believe so that you can have uh, all these separate worlds that don't communicate and come together. Uh, we have to look at that. We all have heartbeats and we want to keep that going. That's an important bit of information. And yeah, once we understand that, then what we eat is going to be way more important and we're going to find ways to make it happen. Yeah, you, know, you, you couldn't that, have said it any better, Carlos. Ab absolutely, absolutely agree. Nothing in my mind whatsoever is going to um, change the way I feel about what goes on in the animal world and will never ever justify you know a hamburger made from animal protein no way never going to happen in my world in millions vegan world but I, I do again encourage people to sort out information so that you know you know know more about the lifestyle exactly what you said it's not only about food it goes further and further beyond that Carlos you have prepared yeah. some Sorry, go ahead. I uh, know. I'm just going to say that. Uh, um, yeah, I mean that's what we have to understand. We have to just come together on that point because we are all, you know, genuinely good people. But that system that we've been in with food has has been blocked from us. So this good person is not really applying right there. We need to make that all come together. Uh, you know, we can't continue like this. Mm, and absolutely. I think that. That'll make a big difference. <laughs> Carlos, you, you, you yes, uh, I, I agree. And I, I think uh, because we live in such a hypocritical world, I think we, we really need to take a look at what, what our, our morals are, what our really true beliefs are, because it, it's, it seems odd for me that people continuously talk about how much they love animals while they're eating a steak. Oh yeah, I've had plenty of friends and relatives, you know, say, you know, sitting there eating a steak while they're petting their dog, saying, "I love animals." Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> some animals, yeah, some, some animals, yeah. you know. But yeah. food for thought. Where, where do we literally? Where do we draw that line mm. of hate? The chicken, yeah. the cow, the white person, the black person. You know, th there's this line that people kind of set that they need to get rid of that and just accept everything is. A beautiful thing. It, I and, couldn't agree more. Well, Carlos, you know, and you need talk, to be protected. Yeah, absolutely. Um, talking about beautiful things, you have prepared a few pictures from your trip in Thailand. Let's take a look at them, and you can um, go through them with us. This one first of the monkeys. Ah, uh, yes. This is a town called Lobur Lobuli, and literally the town is overrun by monkeys. They <laughs> pretty much have taken over. And, uh, you know, they're, they try to get in all the shops, but they get chased out. But these monkeys are free in this town. They, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're really not 
most of them, for the most, most part, they're really gentle. You let they walk right by them and so they cute. don't bother you. You give them a little food some time, but make sure you don't have a necklace or a watch or something. They're going to grab it and, and run with it. <laughs> oh, this is my... Uh, this is your laptop. This is the place. <laughs> yeah, that's my laptop with a slight vegan message there. Yes. Uh, anywhere I am, airports are there at a library at the condo I was staying at. What a at great idea. Yeah, people have to see that, you know. And oh yeah, this was my favorite cheese place in uh, Kopangan that had made the best cheese I've ever had that in my looks life. That gorgeous. And just looking at it, you can tell it's good. Yeah, cashew and, based, uh, cashew or almond. Based? Yeah, these are cashew. Cashew. But they also had chocolates. They had uh, uh, other concoctions, but they were amazing. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, one of the most beautiful beaches that I saw in the south of in Kopangan. And it's almost like a private little, not really private, but they charge admission to get into this area. Uh, but it's really sweet and the beach is beautiful and the water's amazing and little restaurants right there. And this is uh, uh, Delhi Devi, the same place with the cheese. And you see they've got Carlos, pies this, and this is and... unbelievable to see that this little deli is all vegan. We need this in our life here in Hawaii. <laughs> We need this everywhere. I know. That looks amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, oh, boy. Uh, that's a, a little avocado sandwich that this one place called Eat Co. Uh, that I had just uh, just before I saw a friend of mine off at the, uh, mm -hmm. at the boat to leave. And this is jamming with a, a group of uh, Latin musicians that I met while I was there. And basically... Awesome. I played with them any time that they play. They said, always come and play with us. Yes, I saw so, some of your um, video footage of that on your Facebook, Carlos Garcia, your Facebook page. Carlos, we have come to the end of the show again. Um, how the time flies when we're talking vegan. <laughs> yeah, we can do part 30, Don, some other I know. day. But <laughs> yes. It never ends. It yeah. never ends. But it'd be I, good to get some other people on and... Thank Absolutely. you for having me. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I do hope you enjoy your retreat in Oahu. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Carlos. Uh, good luck again on your journey. And to everyone out there, do, do take a look at Carlos Garcia's Facebook page if you want to connect. And you can always connect with me at Lillian Vegan. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Have an awesome day. Aloha.